Hi everyone, Andy here with you from Wildflower Designs and today we are going to be making this adorable little flower satchel bag. So to get started, what we're going to be using today is our 5mm crochet hook, a darning needle for weaving in your ends, a pair of scissors, and some yarn. Today we're going to be needing, actually, today we're going to need a yellow, a flower color, I'll be using this color today, a leaf color, and then the main color of your bag. You can choose any colors you want, but these are the colors that I'll be working with today. Another optional thing that we will be using today is a bead. It doesn't have to be attached to a string. This was just so that I didn't lose it anywhere. We will be using a bead to create a drawstring. Now the alternative, if you don't have a bead, is to create a taller, a longer draw, drawstring so that you can cinch it up and tie it in a bow. So let's get to the pattern. All right, so to start, we are gonna be making a magic ring. Now if you need more clarification on how to make a magic ring, I do have another video from last week. It is crocheting in the round. We made a set of watermelon coasters and I go into more detail on how to do a magic ring. So I will show you just very quickly how to get started here. So we're gonna grab our yarn, we'll run it away from our body over top of all four fingers. And then just around the middle two fingers, we'll do it once and twice. And then we'll sort of awkwardly pinch those two ends together. From right to left, we'll go inside and yarn over. Now to start, we're going to be making two chains. Pardon me, three chains, because we are making, we're starting with a double crochet height. You can then pull your finger out, let the tail fall here, and this is your working yarn, and we'll be working into this ring. So what we're gonna create first is what's called uh, double crocheting two together. So this is an interesting stitch, and what it looks like is this. We are gonna count this first chain three as our first double crochet. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna yarn over, insert our hook, drop a loop, we'll yarn through two, and we'll yarn through two. So that looks like two double crochets right there. Now for the rest of this, it's gonna look a little bit different. We're gonna chain one to give us the space to work into for our next round. And now we're gonna do a proper double crochet two together. So what that looks like is we're gonna yarn over, insert our hook, draw up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. And then we're gonna do that step again. We're gonna yarn over, insert our hook, draw up a loop, we'll yarn over and we'll pull through two. So we have the base of two double crochets started. We'll then yarn over and pull through all three of the remaining loops on our hook. We have just made two double crochet together. So we'll then get this knot out of my way. We'll then chain one and we'll repeat that exact same step. So we'll yarn over, insert our hook, draw up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and then we'll do that again. We'll yarn over, insert our hook, draw up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. We have three left on our hook. We'll yarn over and pull through all three of those. So now what we've created is we have the, the two double crochets at the beginning. This is the chain and this is the double crochet we created. These are counting as one of the double crochet twos together. So we've got one group, two groups and three groups. We're gonna be making eight in total. And in between each one, we're gonna be doing a chain stitch. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up. You can pause the video and I'll meet you back at the end here. So I'll chain one and then I'll make another double crochet two together. Four, one, two, three, and four. I'll do that four more times and I'll meet you at the end. All right, so at the end here, I am gonna do that final chain one, 
because we do need that chain space. And then I'll just give myself a little bit of room to pull through my yarn. So down where the tail is, I'm gonna hold on to this piece here, this right where the stitches are, the base of the stitches, and I'm gonna pull one of the loops. Now one of these is not gonna pull, the other one will. And it's gonna start to cinch up the center of this circle. Once I cinch it right up, it's gonna leave me with this little goofy thing. And to get rid of that, we're gonna pull the tail. And mine's stuck, there we go. <laughs> Sometimes it does get a little bit stuck. We'll cinch it right up. And we have finished our first row. So we're gonna finish off by finding that first group of double, double crochet together. And we will slip stitch, so insert our hook draw up a loop and pull it straight through that loop on our hook. We have finished this row, so we can go ahead and we can trim our yarn. Put that color aside. And then we can just go ahead and pull that straight through and tighten it up. Now, one trick I wanna show you, just to keep your tails to the back of your work, if you want to, you can go under that one stitch and pull that down to the back a little bit. That'll keep your tail in the back. So let's grab our second yarn and we'll attach it. All right, so the second color we're working with is the color that we will be doing our petals with. So whatever, whatever color you have chosen, let's pull out a little bit here. And to attach it, we're gonna slip knot so that we don't lose it. And in between any of these double crochets, the groups of two, where you're, we're gonna find one of those chain stitches. That's where we're going to attach our piece. We'll cinch it up and we'll go ahead and we will chain three. Now again, this chain three is gonna count as our first double crochet. We'll now be creating the puff stitch. So we'll get ourselves comfortable here. And what a puff stitch looks like, it seems daunting, but I promise you can do it. So the same way that we did two together, we're basically doing five together now. So this is gonna count as the first one. We will yarn over, insert our hook, draw up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. We're gonna do that, we have two right there. We're gonna do that four, uh, three more times. So yarn over, insert, draw up a loop, pull through two. Yarn over, insert, draw up a loop, yarn over, pull through whoop, two. And we'll do that once more, yarn over, insert our hook, yarn over it and pull through two. What you're left with just this time is five loops on your hook. You'll go ahead and yarn over and pull through all five of those loops. We then need to chain two. We're gonna skip right over these two double crochets and we're gonna go right into that next chain one space. And we're gonna do that again. Except this time, we're gonna end up with six loops on our hook because we're gonna be carrying this loop over with us. So the first time around, we only had five loops on our hook because this one didn't have a stitch attached to it before we were making it for the first time. So now what it's gonna look like is we're gonna yarn over, insert our hook, draw up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, insert our hook, draw up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, do that again. Again, we have four so far, one, two, three, four. We're gonna do it once more because we need a total of five on there to make that puff stitch. Now you can see that we have the five loops that we've just created and the one from the previous stitch. So we do have six now. We'll yarn over and we'll pull through all six of those. And then we'll chain two, one and two. We're gonna repeat this all the way around. So in between each double crochet group there from the first row, you'll find that chain space, and we're gonna make a puff stitch in each one of those chain spaces. I'll show you once more, and then I'll meet you at the end. So we'll yarn over, insert, draw up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. We'll do that four more times. One, two, three, and four. So we have a total of five on here, one, two, three, four, and five, which means we also have five loops and the one from the stitch previous. We'll yarn over and we'll pull through all five of those. 
Now don't forget your chain two. And then you can repeat that step. And I'll meet you at the end when we're finished up here. Okay, so I'm just about to finish up my last puff stitch here. I will chain two, and we are now done with this color. So we are going to find the top of that puff stitch. It's tricky, you gotta go all the way up the train, I mean chain, excuse me, and slip stitch right into the top of that first stitch. So we'll insert our hook, drop a loop, and then pull it straight through that loop on your hook. Then you can give yourself a couple of inches, snip your yarn, and pull that straight through. You can snug that right up. All right, we've just finished our flower, and you will notice that your work is starting to curl. That's a good thing, because what's going to happen is this green row and the rows after that will flatten it out, but the stitches of the flower will puff out. So you can go ahead and even poke your finger in through there and get them to really nicely puff up. And we will grab our next color of yarn. We'll use a leafy green. All right, so the same way as we attached our other row, we're going to start with a slip knot to make sure our work is nice and secure. Tighten it up just a bit. And again, we're going to find those chain stitches in between the puff stitches. That's where we're going to insert our hook. So we will snug it up and again we're going to start with a double crochet so we will chain three now this stitch again is the exact same concept as the two together and the five together this is called a cluster we are doing three together in this one so we already have one here we will yarn over insert our hook draw up a loop and yarn through two and do that once more so we have the first one, the second one, and the third one. We'll yarn over and we'll pull through all three. Now this pattern for this row, you do have to pay a little bit more closer attention to because we are gonna be doing, we're gonna be doing a cluster stitch, a chain two and a cluster stitch in each corner. But in between here, we're gonna be chaining two, we'll do a normal double crochet, we'll chain two, and then another double normal double crochet right into the middle. So I'm gonna walk you through this whole entire row so that nothing gets mixed up. Just got my tail poking out through there. There we go. So I've just made my first cluster of three. I'm gonna chain two, one, two. And in that next chain space, I'm gonna place a normal double crochet. So just yarn over, insert, drop a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. I'm then gonna chain two, one and two. And in that same stitch that I just worked, I will put one more double crochet. So this is, whoops, this is what it looks like right now. I will then chain two and I've reached my next corner. We're calling them corners. Now in this one, we're going to place two um, double crochet clusters but in between those, we have to chain two so that we have something to work into for our next row. So we will yarn over, insert our hook, draw up a loop, yarn over and pull through two, and then we have to do that twice more. So yarn over, insert your hook, draw up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, insert your hook, draw up a loop, yarn over and pull through three. Now we have four loops left on our hook. We've got the three that we've just created and the one from the stitch previous. We'll yarn over and we'll pull through all two. There's one of our clusters. We will now chain two, one and two, and we'll do another cluster right in that same chain space. So we yarn over, draw up a loop, pull through two, yarn over, draw up a loop, pull through two, oops. Yarn over, draw up a loop, pull through two. We've got those four loops left on our hook. We'll yarn over and pull through all four. So there's our first corner. Now in the next chain, we're gonna do the same thing that we did back here. We're gonna chain two. We'll place one double crochet. We'll chain two. 
And then in the same chain space, we're gonna place another double crochet. We'll chain two and we're at our next one. This is another corner. So we're gonna do the same thing we did here. A puff, pardon me, a cluster, chain two and another cluster. Do a cluster. Chain two and a cluster. We'll chain two and then we're going to repeat what we did here. So we have a double crochet, chain two, and in the same chain space, another double crochet. Again, we'll chain two and we're back at another corner. So we're going to place a cluster, chain two, cluster. Cluster. Chain two and another cluster. Oops, pulled through all three there. And back around, we're going to copy what we did here. We'll chain two, put a normal double crochet, chain two, another normal double crochet. And then we'll chain two again and we're back at the corner. Now we already have one of the clusters. We need to make one more. So in that same chain space that you started your first cluster in, we'll put one more cluster. And then we still need that chain two. So we'll chain two and then we can slip stitch into the top of that first cluster. We'll grab our scissors, snip off, pull it straight through and tighten up. So now we have finished the first three rows. Now we'll be working with the main color. So grab your main color and we'll attach it. So we will find our third color of yarn and we're going to start the same way again. We are going to slip knot. We will find one of the corners. I'm going to start right in the corner where I left off. You don't have to. And we will chain three again. Now we're done with clustering. These are going to be regular, normal double crochets for the rest of this pattern. And then normal chain stitches. Now again, we're starting right in the corner. So right in the chain two space in between two groups of clusters. You can start in any corner. I'm starting in the one where I left off, but you don't have to. We are going to go ahead and place, this is counting as the first double crochet, we're gonna place two more right in that same chain two space. So one and two. Now in each of these chain two spaces, this one, this one, and this one, we're gonna place three double crochets, regular double crochets. So we've got one, two, three. In this next one here, we're going to place another three. One, two, three. In this one here, we're going to place another regular three double crochets. One, two, and three. Now, once we've reached this corner, so in the chain two space between each of the clusters, we're going to place three double crochets. So one, two, three. We'll chain two to make that corner. And then we'll place another three double crochets in that same chain two space. One, two, and three. So that's where we're making our corner. So you're going to continue each row or each um, side doing the exact same thing. So three double crochets in each chain two space, 
but when you get to the corner, so when you get to that chain two space in between the double crochet cluster, we're gonna put three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets. So you continue all the way around and I will meet you at the end. So I'm at the end here, I'm back to that first chain two space that I put my first group of three double crochets in. I'm gonna place three more double crochets into that chain space. Whoops. One. Two. And three. And again, I still need to make that chain two. So I will chain one and I will chain two. And then I'm gonna slip stitch into the top of that initial chain three. You just need to go under one, but if you're able to get under both um, loops, then that's even better. Okay, so we are not gonna fashion off with this color because we do still have to do a couple more rows. We are gonna do one more round, and then we're gonna actually start working back and forth. We're gonna start working in rows after we finish this round. So for this round, we are going to start with, again, a chain three. One, two, three. And this is still going to count as our first double crochet. Now this one is a little bit awkward, but I promise that this will get hidden in the pattern. So right into the same chain two space, not into this first double crochet, but into the same chain two space, right at the base where that chain three came from, we're gonna place two more double crochets. So right in here. One and two, okay? So that's what that looks like. So this does look a little bit goofy, but it will get hidden as the pattern goes. Now in between each of these sets of three double crochets, we're gonna go ahead and place three double crochets. When we get to the corner, we're gonna do the same thing that we did for this corner. So into this chain two space, we're gonna place three double crochet, chain two, and three double crochet. I'll work the first row with you. So in between one, two, three, and this group of one, two, three, right in between there, we're gonna place three double crochets. One, two, three. We're gonna do the same into the next one. One, two, three, and into the next one. One, two, three. Into that last one here. Whoops. One, two, three. And we've reached the corner. So here's the chain two space in the corner. So again, in here, we're gonna place three double crochet, chain two, and three double crochet. So we've got three double crochet, I'm gonna chain one and two, and then into that same chain two space, I'm gonna place three more double crochet. What we're giving ourselves is the illusion of a corner. All right, and again, all the way down this side, we're gonna place three in between each group of three. Once we get to that chain two in the corner, we'll place three, chain two, and three. And we'll continue all the way around like that, so I meet you at the end. All right, so I'm at the end here, and I'm back to that first corner that I created. So I've got my first group of three. I need to add another group of three in here. So into that beginning chain two space that we were working into, we'll place three more double crochet. And then of course we have to finish off with that chain two. And again, we're gonna slip stitch into the top of that beginning chain three that's counting as our first double crochet. It's a little tricky, so if you can't get right in between the yarn, you can just go right through the big space. Oh my goodness, I am splitting my yarn like crazy. There we go. Okay, so we are done working in the round. 
what we're now gonna do is we're gonna start working. We have two more rows of white to complete and then two more rows of the flower color that, you're, that you've chosen. So we're gonna start working back and forth now rather than going in circles, going all the way around. So what that's gonna look like is we are going to chain one, chain two, and chain three, and we're gonna flip our work over. So this is the way that it's facing right now. What we wanna be working is back down the right-hand side of it. So we're gonna flip our work and then kind of turn it a little bit. And we see all of our lovely tails that we have to go ahead and weave in soon too. Now this will look a little bit funny while the pattern gets started, but it will work itself out again. So this is gonna count as your first double crochet. We are gonna skip the chain right here and we're gonna go ahead and in between this group of three and this group of three, we're going to, just like we did in the previous row, put three double crochet. So I'm gonna yarn over, insert my hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Now this is gonna look funky, but once we work that next row, it's gonna straighten itself out. So we'll place three, so we've got one, two, three, we're gonna work our way across. When you get to the corner, we're just placing one double crochet. So I'll show you what that looks like. We've got one, two, three, one, two, and whoop, three, one, two and three, one, two and three. Now in this last one, I'm just gonna place one double crochet in that chain two space. I'm just placing one double crochet. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of evening out my pattern here. We started with one double crochet we're ending with one double crochet. You should have five groups of three in between. In this next row, we will chain three, one, two, three, and we'll turn our work again. Now into this first space here, we're gonna work two more double crochets because again, this is gonna count as one. We need three total, so we're gonna add two more right into here, one, and two. So it now looks like we have a group of three there. Now all the way across, in here, 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 and here, we're gonna work three double crochet. And in that strange looking beginning chain three from the row previous, we are also gonna place three double crochet. So we'll work our way across here. One, two, three, one, whoops, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and in that final strange looking chain space, we're gonna place three more. One, two, and three. We are now finished with our white yarn. So we can go ahead and just chain one more. Snip your yarn, put that to the side, and we'll pull it straight through. And you can snug that up and we'll weave that there. Now we'll go ahead and we'll grab our petal color and we'll attach it. So the same way as we've been attaching our yarn for all of these previous rows, we're gonna start with a slip knot. All right, now we are going to turn our work over because we are gonna work back again. And we'll go ahead and we'll insert our hook into the top of that last double crochet. So again, we were working this direction. This is the last one that we've made. We're gonna insert our hook into the top of it. And we'll pull through our flower petal yarn and chain three. One, two, three. 
Now the same way that this first row started with just one double crochet, this row is also going to start with just one double crochet, which means it's also going to finish with one double crochet. In between each of these groups, we're gonna place three. So I'll meet you at the end here. I'm gonna go ahead and place three in here. One, two, three. And then each across until that final stitch, we're gonna place one double crochet into the top of the chain three that we started with over there. So I'll meet you at the end in just a sec. Okay, so I've just finished my five groups of three. And again, into the top of this chain three that started the previous row, I will place a double crochet. And again, it's a strange thing to do. So if you can only get under one loop, that's fine. What is happening? There we go. Okay, so we will chain three to start our next row and turn our work once more. Now this will be our final row for this side. Oops. So again, the same way that our second row started with a chain three and then two double crochets in the same space, we're gonna be creating the exact same row. So we're gonna yarn over, insert our hook, drop a loop, yarn over, pull through two, do it again. There's one double crochet and another double crochet. And in each of these groups and in that last strange chain three, we're gonna place three double crochet. And here we are at that strange final um, stitch there. We're gonna place three double crochet. One, two, and three. And we are now finished the first side of our satchel. So we will chain one, trim our yarn, put it aside, pull that through, snug it up, and we are finished our first side. When we flip over our work, we are left with a hideous mess of tails. So go ahead and weave in all of your tails and then you need to create one more of this entire side. So together, we will have two sides and we will be sewing them together. So go ahead and weave in your tails, make yourself another side, and I will meet you back here where I will show you how to sew them together. And then we will make the drawstring and attach it. All right, I'll meet you back in a couple minutes when you're done that. All right, so I'm back here with both of my pieces finished up. All of the tails have been woven in, and this is what it looks like. It does kind of look like a bit of a bowl in the center, but again, that's because of the texture of the puff stitches that we created for the petals. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna put both of the wrong sides, so the back sides, together like this. So we've got a front side and a front side, both facing out. We'll have our piece we're gonna be working down the sides, across the bottom, and then up the other side. So start with your piece where the opening or the, the top of your bag is to the right side because we will be working to the left. And then go ahead and grab your main color yarn. Now there are two different ways that you can do this. If you would like to, you can use just a normal whip stitch. And that basically looks like this. So you'll take your yarn with both pieces together. You'll just insert your needle and you'll just continue to go all the way down your work with a whip stitch or a basket stitch, whichever stitch you wanna do. You can sew all the way down across the bottom and up the side. You wanna start where your white or your main color yarn starts and then if you want to, you can just leave the top little edge here with the color open, or if you wanted to, you can grab that same color and just do a really quick whip stitch as well. But what I'm gonna show you is the way that I finished off this one with a nice single crochet bordered edge that goes all the way around. I think it really completes the piece. So this is what I'm gonna show you right now. Let me just pull out those stitches. Lay those 
it's flat again, and then I'll show you how we do the single crochet. So grab your crochet hook, and we will again start with a slip knot. We'll grab our piece right here, and for the first little bit here, for the first um, two rows, we are going to be working down the side of a stitch, which is tricky to see, but the double crochets are so tall, you should be able to get two single crochet stitches down the side of each one. Make sure that you've got both your pieces together, you're not just doing down the one side of one piece. So we'll just kind of chain one to get started. So what I'm looking for here is, this is the side of my double crochet, and then this is the side of another double crochet. In each of these, I want to place two double or two single crochets. So I'm going to place one and two, and then the side of the next double crochet here, I'm going to place another two, one and two. This will get you now to the top of your stitches because we were working in rounds before. So you should be able to see nice and clearly the top of your stitches. So you're gonna go ahead and place one single crochet that connects both of the pieces in each stitch down until you get to the corner. So we should look something like this. So it is kind of tricky to see. If you need to turn your work on your side a little bit, you want to make sure that you're picking up both of those V's from both of the stitches. You're just going to work one single crochet in each stitch all the way down to the corner. In that corner, where there is a chain two, you're going to place two single crochets. So it's a very, very simple way to finish up your piece and add a nice edge to it. I'll just work my way down and show you that first corner and then I'll let you finish up and we will make the drawstring. Just a couple more stitches here. All right, final two stitches and then we're at this chain two space. All right, so here I am at the chain two space. I am gonna go ahead and I'm gonna place two single crochets into that space. That gets us around that corner. And then I'm gonna continue the same way along the bottom of my piece, attaching those. Once I get to this chain space, I'll place two. I'll go all the way up the side. And then I'll place two single crochets into each of the side of those two double crochets. Once you're done that, you can grab the, the matching yarn for your flower petal and for the top of your piece. And you could just do a really simple whip stitch into those final two rows there. And then I will meet you back at the end when I've done that and we will make the drawstring. All right, so here I am so far with my little satchel bag. I've got the opening up at the top here. All of my ends have been hidden in my piece. And the only thing that is missing now is this drawstring. So we're gonna make this drawstring and we're gonna attach a bead. Well, this is how the bead helps. Okay, so it helps to cinch up that bag nicely. Now again, if you don't have a bead, you can just make your drawstring a little bit longer to allow yourself the room to sort of tie a bow when it's all cinched up. So let's go ahead and we'll make that drawstring. So grab the same yellow yarn that you use to start your piece. And we're gonna start with a slip knot. This is super, super simple. All we're doing is making a foundation chain. Now, if the, you want this sort of a length, I believe I did 65 or 70, but if you want longer or shorter, you just add or take away chains. So all I'm doing is creating a foundation chain and I'm gonna go for about 70 stitches. But again, if you wanna go longer because you don't have a bead and you wanna be able to tie it, or if you don't want your drawstring to be quite as long as the one that I created on my first piece, then just make it a little bit shorter. So go ahead and chain as many as you want and I will meet you back here in just a second to show you where to weave it in. All 
All right, so I am at the end here. Now, I actually didn't count this time. I just sort of folded it in half and measured it against my piece. So I don't know how many chains I have here, but that's all you have to do is measure your piece, fold it in half and, and, and measure it because it's gonna go around both sides of it. And then that will give you the length that you want. When you're done, give yourself a bit of room. We will trim this, but it's just more so to get your yarn through the bead. You can just pull straight through and tighten it up. So here's our drawstring. Now, all we're gonna do, if you wanna use a crochet hook or a larger needle, you can be my guest, but I'm just gonna use my fingers to do this. So in the row before, the final white row, so before the color change, that's where we're gonna be weaving in and out of each of the groups of three double crochet. So all I'm going to do is with my fingers, just sort of push this in and out of each group of three. And you can do that all around your piece. When I get to the side, it's a little bit awkward, but what I do wanna do is tuck that in. We'll go underneath sort of that strange little bump on the side there and we'll come back out the front or the back side, I guess. Doesn't really matter either way, because <laughs> both sides will look the same. So we'll weave all the way through. One more guy to pull through here. And again, we're gonna pop out the side there. We'll find the middle. adjust your drawstring as you need to. And then we'll grab our bead. Now again, I only have this attached to a string so that it wouldn't roll off the counter and I would lose it. So I'm just gonna cut that off there. I'm gonna grab my darning needle. Now you do want a fairly wide um, opening to your bead so that you can get both of those foundation, the sides of the foundation chain through there. It is pretty tricky sometimes if you use the bead is too tiny. I did make that mistake on my first one that I made. So make sure you get both sides through the bead and make sure that you're putting them through. It's silly, but I feel like I need to, to tell some people, I just gotta say it anyways, make sure that you're putting them through the same direction. You're not crossing them over. There we go, we can pull that off. We can even out our pieces. And there you have it. Now at the end here, because it's super extra long for me, I am gonna go ahead and snip those two pieces. And there you go, you've got your cinch bag. So all we do, your little satchel bag, pull that bead to tighten it up and then pull it away to open it back up. So thank you so much for joining me again this week. I hope you had fun. I hope you make a whole bunch of them. And next week, we're gonna be making our first dream catcher. It's gonna be a little six inch diameter one, a nice mini one. We're gonna have lots of colors in it and it's gonna be so much fun. So I hope you join me next week. Thank you so much for joining me today and I will talk to you next week. Have a great Canada day.